We're the grubs. Grubs, grubs, grubs. Kick them over. We'll hit the pubs. Grubs, grubs, grubs. And don't forget your subs. Ho, ho, ho. Welcome to the Grub Show, Sports Bets Cricket Podcast. For the last time this year, my name is Hammy Goodman. Alongside me, Rambo the Red Nosed Reindeer <laughs> and Hummer Claws. <laughs> Welcome, gentlemen. Merry, Merry Christmas, Rambo. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas Harry. Merry Christmas, Grublings. Uh, how are we? <laughs> Very well. Are you hot and itchy under that thing, or how are you travelling? I'm looking forward to when I'm allowed to take this off. Yep. Uh, it's okay. I mean, it's going right up my schnoz like a COVID test. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's my eyes water. It's so hopefully up. negative. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the last time uh, we had a show and you dyed your beard. <laughs> it's a different colour. <laughs> He told, he told us that in confidence. <laughs> uh, how, how did your boys enjoy the last test? Oh, look, I mean, it's always good watching a, a test where we're, we're very, very dominant. Yeah. It, mm. it, it was a test that I would find, if, you, if there was anyone sitting on the fence about do they like test cricket or you're trying to get a someone that perhaps, or you're trying yep. to get the Dahl or someone into test cricket, probably not the best it one It wasn't very entertaining, it. was it, Hum? No. Yeah, it wasn't. It was a, I felt like the patrons just in front of the hill there at the Adelaide Oval were uh, making more fast work than the players out on the field. Oh, they my were. Have you seen some of the social clips getting around? And oh, I don't think uh, I've seen more people kicked out or more, more, no. probably more cricket clips on Brown Cardigan uh, than yes. I saw this week. Um, yeah, they definitely came with purpose, some of the Adelaide attendants. They but, did. Um, well played some, but also, you know, consume your uh, mid beers <laughs> yeah, responsibly. That's to, uh, to, to get to that level, of course, responsibly, yep. uh, on mid-strength beer extraordinary. is an extraordinary feat. It is yep. a good innings. Uh, and weren't there some great uh, mullets we saw on display in the crowd as well? I was very impressed yep. with some of the hair that we saw coming out of Adelaide this week. I thought they'd... Well, thought Adelaide, they'd, I mean, Adelaide's... Trademark. Yeah, yeah. it's a, a trademark for Adelaide. Adelaide's... Ba- nature is healing. They haven't got How's much that? else to do. Go Aaron, to church, grow a mullet. Aaron yeah. Tom, the cameraman, was, uh, has done some great things with the mop over the days, and he's it, an Adelaide local. I think he's doing around the traps around South Australia at the moment. He certainly has. He certainly has. But, yeah, good to see Australia go 2-0 up. Uh, looking forward to seeing that very... So my prediction's gone. Yeah, your My stuff. one zip. You had one zip, so <laughs> another cross for you, Hammer. <laughs> Um, Are we talking cricket now? We're going to talk about uh, you got a slight update, I think. Yeah, look, it is a big show. We've got uh, naughty or nice lists coming up a little bit Beautiful. later. Hummetheticals and uh, mm-hmm. and Rambo's quiz, of course, coming up a little bit later. But we've been looking for a new skipper. Uh, you'd probably know that if you've been watching the, the show or, or the Grubs content over the course of the summer. Um, and we did have a LinkedIn ad that went up a couple of weeks ago, and remarkably, we actually had a, a couple of genuine <laughs> nibbles. I uh, thought. For this one. And there was one that stood out, a guy called Sean Chappie Chapman. Now, Sean Chappie Chapman, he describes himself as a below average cricketer with above average stories. So that, instantly, he's a pretty good fit already. Some of yep. his skills include chat from first slip, uh, <laughs> the ability to find a reason why we owe these pricks against every club, uh, having the younger <laughs> members uh, respect and fear him in equal parts, and he's an elite cordial mixologist. So there's a few things that just sort of Jeez. leapt out at me that this guy's potentially... He, he's sent a legitimate CV in there. He has. He's played in the Houston Cricket League in Texas. He's oh. got some international experience, which yeah. we like as well. Uh, he's a life member of that uh, that particular league as well. But what I loved is he added a few photos in his CV. Now, oh, every no. now and again, someone does this. And wh- oh, which one is he? He's at first slip First slip, sure. <laughs> if we keep going through them, you're going to see some likeness to a certain oh, skipper we've seen wow. in the past. There he is with the bat. Look, Look at the bowling action. That is pretty much... Skip. Well, he's we got the midriff of the crease. He's got the, he's got the midriff showing like Skip always like to do. And he's, he's, the, he's the one on the left there. Uh, <laughs> so, look, uh, I thought there was just a, a fair bit of likeness there. there was, to, yeah. I, I mean, maybe we want to branch out and get away from what we've we've dealt with in the past. But he, he felt on the surface, Chappy Chapman, like a pretty good fit to me. I don't know. What do does, you he, does he... Did he list his strengths as well, or was it just the those elements? No, uh, four times just kidding, Chubby. Best <laughs> clubman, a uh, few bowling awards here and there. Premiership skipper of a team I named called the Wombats. That was E grade. Beautiful uh, for those players. Well, so, I think we always said they're going to be big whites to fill, but it looks like Chappy <laughs> is definitely up to the job, yeah. and he's our clubhouse leader for sure. He's taking it seriously. He's also included a photo of his passport, which we won't put on the screen. Um, <laughs> what? what? He wants his job. He wants the job. What so, type of batting style, or do you reckon? He, I mean, that that cricket bat looked like a toothpick in his yeah. hand. Yeah. yeah. I don't reckon there'd be any f- sort of crafty sort of flick off the pad. No, it? no, no. Yeah. Oh, I'd be fairly confident if we were to give him that question in the interview process, Hum, about what he would do on the first ball uh, if he didn't yeah. require a slog to cow. Yeah. Um, yeah exactly. I'd be extremely surprised. Well, yeah. a picture paints a thousand words, and I think we saw it in full Absolutely. effect. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Hurry up and point, uh, appoint someone. 
New Year's resolution. We'll, we'll get to it. But if, if you know a chappy, or if you want to tell us a little bit more, chappy, we'd love to hear from uh, from the horses. Now, maybe even get him on. Maybe interview him live on the show. Well, we should. Hums, it's not as as au fait with the politics of the club. I don't think you understand. Uh, well, you no, know, but the I, hurdles that need to go through for this appointment. I, I, we are a rudderless ship at the moment. Our on-field uh, performances are horrendous. Yeah. We need someone to come in and, and steady the ship. And you know, did I, I just hear muffled under your beard there that you said you were polite? Yeah. And, did, and I didn't even get a call back. Yeah. I got nothing. I didn't even get right. I got nothing from HR. The club made it pretty clear that they, they didn't see a, a great deal of leadership. Oh, yeah, I club. used an alias as well. You saw straight through it. Yeah. It was an S clause. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, there you go. So keep them coming, please. We'd love to, we would love to at some stage appoint a skipper. So um, do keep them coming. We just spoke about the last Ashes test, mm-hmm. but it might be a good time to check in on our bold predictions that we yep. had earlier in the summer. I think if you're watching this on KR on YouTube, we have got a bit of a graphic here to remind you of what they were. So I'll run through mine very quickly. Rory Burns to get less than 100 runs for the series. He did dig in in that second innings yep. in Adelaide. He's sitting on 51 so well, far. It's going to be tight. I think I think he still can collapse. You've beaten the book, Ham. Uh, Hammy, sorry. Yeah, You've I have. I have beaten the book. Beaten the book. It's all about yep. finding your price punting, uh, punting. The next one was Joe Root to break the runs record in a calendar year. Now, he needs about another 170 uh, good batting conditions generally at Melbourne. Two so. fifty again. I, I hate to bring this up each week. <laughs> Hardly How bold. How was that bold? Yeah, well, this this next they're bold because they're, they're futuristic. Come, huh? yeah, it's a long way out. So that's the bold part of it, coming. Yeah, right. and then the last one was uh, two or more drawn matches. I really do need Lanina to come to the party here. I've probably mm. been L- let down. Lanina has, has gone missing. Yeah, that's <laughs> all we spoke about Lan- for the last six months. I haven't seen a. a uh, any of La- Lanina. Lanina's been in uh, Where are you? Rory Burns' form. Um, yeah, or very Ollie, overhyped, Ollie hasn't it been? Absolutely. Well, present companies has hyped it up as much as possible. Well, my mod league's never wrong. <laughs> and I suggest, I think Lanina will hit soon and hard. Okay. All yeah. right. Well, I'm still in the yeah, game there. Best. Uh, potentially. Now, what about yourself? Uh, I'm still... Present? I was unlucky with Paddy Cummins. Uh, ridiculously ruled out yeah. of the second test match Crazy. in Adelaide, unfortunate for the Australian captain. Um, but 29 series wickets for him. He could still come back and he'll lead from the front. Really happy with my Joe Root under one and a half centuries bet and really happy with under uh, yeah. five and a half centuries for this series. People just keep getting out between 50 and 100, Joe Root ticks that box every day of the week. So I've got two and one there, Hum. Skinny your teeth. You've got a few guys, sort of 95 plus, getting out. Yeah, you've got very war, lucky. Yeah, I think Warner twice. Yep. Um, Mana should have been out. Yep. Um, so we're looking pretty there. So it's something to look forward to for the next three series if England don't rock up yet again. Uh, what about yourself, Hum? You had some pretty ambitious. You did buy into the bold nature of uh, those uh, Well, I mean, that, that was the brief, Hammy. And, <laughs> uh, so I went away and, and found, I really went digging for some value. Now, one of mine is, is very good. One, well, one, there's no way of really ever being able to say how it's going because it needs to happen in one match. It's 10 wickets from one bowler in a, in a innings. Yep. Paying 250 That's nice so Maybe Jack Leach in Sydney with some spin friendly <laughs> conditions. If well, you I mean, stranger it. things have probably <laughs> happened. But the one that I'm excited about is Love Shane, top Australian series run scorer. Yep. He's flying. Hazelwood, of course, he missed. He comes back, but you know, if a couple of ten match, um, ten match wickets. <laughs> well, ten no, wicket one, no one has really taken any big hauls there. That, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Stark has already hit one six, yep. so he only needs one more, yep. which I'm pretty confident. And then Carey, who looked delicious in the in the second innings, yep, he did uh, with a with a with a fifty. All he does needs to do is make a century, and you're getting 126 to one. Where run. do you reckon he so scores alive. the century? Hobart. Yeah. That's yeah. I think Hobart. 4-0 up, junk time. I think 4-0 up, it's going to be junk time. It's going to be, you know, almost akin to a Milo cricket game. You, you reverse <laughs> the order, let everyone have a bat, yep. let everyone have a bowl, and I think Kerry will just, you know, it will just be, it will almost be an exhibition game. 126, <laughs> 126 bucks, Hum, we're with you. Yep. You're giving it wings, everyone out there. Yes. Yeah. We're riding it with you, Hum. Fingers crossed. You're doing a great job. Now, speaking of uh, checking in on some of our big, bold predictions, we mm. also had the BBL run score a draft. Now, I've got to be honest, uh, some of the scheduling clashes didn't lend itself to a lot of great BBL watching over the last couple of nights. No. That's right. Um, so I've been a little bit out of the loop, but mm. I think we have got the updated tally here on the screens. Uh, so I'm Hammer. in the lead uh, uh, on 429. <laughs> 420. Hunter's got 420. Oh, my favourite uh, number. <laughs> and then, Second uh, favourite number. Rambo on. <laughs> yeah, I'm really bringing up the rear here. 337. Now yeah. you're defending your title, Rambo. You're not doing a great job there. Mitch Marsh. Two innings, one big ton. I'm, I reckon I'm in the box seat there. Josh Inglis started with a blob, but he's ready to go bang as well. Uh, and Ben McDermott, he, he's been a hazard to the crowds out there. Well, last last season, this was a runaway train I won quite easily. Yep. I, I'll just throw it out there and say this will be a tight run affair. Yep. I, I think it'll be a three-horse three, three horse race as well. I'll, I'll come back to the field there and Marcus Stonis find some form around Christmas. Yep. And uh, Chris Lynn, I've pretty much been to him, but Jimmy Vince, uh, hoping he doesn't get picked for England. 
Apparently the chat is he sees it is an option. Ooh. Yeah. Um, I think he'll find some form as well. The Sixers are playing very good cricket. So I know you guys are well in front. Ham is he's the favourite, but I would still keep your eyes on that one. That'll be a tight race. Jack Weatherall, the South Australian idiot. What's he doing? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's bad a little bit. Oh See, ever since God. he kicked Matt Renshaw's helmet, he's really yeah. been out of form a little bit. But he, he's ready to go bang as well. He's a quality player. He's always up the top of the big bash. Uh, you should just give Travi head a call and see if you can get in touch with the with the great man, Jake, and have a few words over the phone. and A few throwdowns, maybe? He left me on scene last time I messaged on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wonder why, mate. That's because yeah. you doubted him. That's because you doubted him. Now, uh, we're going to get to a couple of these. Fops. Fines. So today uh, we're going to just twist these up a little bit. We're going to these are your naughty lists. Uh, you get Very into nice. Christmas spirit. Oh, naughty list a, and your nice a list. Christmas tone. So uh, over to you, Rambo, the red nosed reindeer. Do you want to take the new ball for your naughty list? Yeah, I've, I've got more nices than naughty today, uh, Hammy, because it is the giving season and we want to get <laughs> yeah, around very people. Positive of you. My first fine <laughs> goes to final day fuddy duddies. I'm calling them. Yep. Oh. Now. This always seems to happen when Australia's convincingly in front through the whole test match, effectively. England were barely in it. I mean, there was a couple of sessions there where they looked like they weren't even trying. I think started day two in particular. Yeah. Had no interest in trying to remove Steve Smith or Marnus Labuschagne. Uh, but it comes down to the kind of the last few sessions. Australia needs three to four wickets. And all of a sudden, everyone's just tossed all this good work out the window and it's panic stations. Yeah. Why isn't Cameron Green bowling? Why should, why should, we should have enforced a follow-on. You know, yeah. why is head getting an over before T? Yep. Just calm down. Yeah. Everything's going to be fine. It's, it's not easy taking 20 wickets in a test match. Yep. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. Um, they got there in the end very, very comfortably. So unless you're English, you don't know more than the captain, coach, and the team. <laughs> Just settle down, put the keyboard away, as you'd say, hum, and enjoy another Australian victory, which is going to happen all summer. Just, you know. Yeah. Just zip it up a bit. So the, the scaremongering, essentially, is what yeah, you Yeah, just getting a little bit too carried away in the moment. Scare, that- scaremongering is the flavour of the month at the moment. It started with COVID. It's, it's progressed into Omnicrom. The, into, yeah, Omnicrom. It's yep. progressed into the cricket. I'm with you It's there. very easy to react. It so is. Just, it's a lot harder to sit back and settle in and, and trust your team. Very easy. My other uh, on the naughty list, Hammy, is yep. um, I can't... We're not allowed to show the vision of this, unfortunately, but it's a bold her... Howler I saw from the one-day tournament in the women's uh, competition, Tasmania versus Queensland. Yep. An absolutely ripping nut takes the yeah. top of off bow. Every bowl is taught to do it. Beautifully done, straight to the defences of the Queensland girl. And no one appealed. Yeah. The bail was literally dislodged. Yep. Now, I think there might have been some confusion whether the wicketkeeper accidentally dislodged it. She didn't. It was clean bowled, and uh, the umpire even strode in from square leg, picked the bail up, put it back on the stumps, and everyone kept playing. So I don't know what's happening there. Well, she's not giving out. No. She's not giving out. And the commentators lost it, didn't they? Everyone couldn't believe it. Yeah. Uh, look, I don't know who is more culpable here, Hammy, but I think it's the bowler. Yeah. If you get anywhere near the stumps, me in particular, yeah, I'm, going I'm going down there with a microscope to make <laughs> sure um, anything didn't happen. So there's a fine, unfortunately enough, um, for the... In the women's one day tournament. Yeah, I did see that. That was pretty remarkable scenes, I've got to say. Now, speaking of remarkable scenes, and we spoke about this on the show a couple of weeks ago. I actually played uh, cricket on the weekend, and uh, there was a bit of a <laughs> rain interruption. Yep, on, and a, on a Sunday. On a Sunday, yep. I was pretty hungover. A lot of people Tragic. there were, not a lot of people mm. wanted to play. Um, and then after the rain delay, the, mm. the home side, uh, Melbourne High, they produced a bit of this action. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. no. Let's just let's just call it. <laughs> <laughs> let's get out of here. <laughs> yeah, they had a laugh, but they, they were pretty insistent <laughs> yeah, that we kept playing. So. What was that contract? That was like a sawn off shotgun. <laughs> it was a sawn off blower. <laughs> it was a sawn off blower. <laughs> um, and there was two or three wet patches we, we played on and we, we ended up losing quite badly. But uh, for being too keen, we spoke about we it. We talked about this, didn't we? Get, give it a wash. We could have gone to the pub or gone, gone back to bed. Let's be honest, there's no. There's no more positive outcome than cricket getting caught off. Yeah, like that absolutely. should always be the, what you're striving for. Yes. Is for cricket to be caught Especially off. Especially on a Sunday. Why would you pull out any... Me- if there's the slightest way that the game could be called off, you exploit that loophole. Yep. I would go... You know what I'd do beforehand? You just go and leave a, a bag of ice on the pitch that night. <laughs> we're on, uh, go on, sorry. We're on, we're on the same page there, Hummer. It's really hard to understand when you don't see that kind of quorum at the pitch. Yeah. So in this instance, you're just kind of staring there. You've got the camera out, which full props to you. That yep. was, if you're seeing any of that action out there, please send it in. That's right. Call but it out. It's very difficult, huh, when you don't have that kind of meeting in the minds there and go, that's all, yeah. you know, go to the pub. And when it does happen, I always feel like I've made a friend. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm going to have at least five to six with this individual and yeah. probably have a bit of a punt and have a good time at the pub. And 
will be best mates for a day, but it just doesn't seem to happen enough. No. no. Well, our team was on the same page. We wanted to push that one, but Melbourne yep. High Old Boys, you can have yourself a fine. I, nice. I'm just fascinated where they got a sawn-off blower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was Custom remarkable. Made. It yeah. just fit in the cricket bag. Not, not that I would ever use it for that purpose. <laughs> um, what purpose it, would you use it for? Well, just, you know, garden maintenance. <laughs> but not having a log with one of that, that massive tube around would be fantastic. Uh, but I'm glad you brought up the cricket, Hammy, because you... You considered yourself a good cricketer when you were young. You used to claim that you played in this, what, the second 11? Did you, get the, did you make the first 11? I was. I was first first 11, several you, years, actually. Yeah. And you've all, and you dress the, the way you do. You do dress very well. You wear the long sleeves and you've got all the kit that I like fits to look well. Like you a don't cricketer. have it. You, and you certainly look like a cricketer. Well, you might look like a cricketer. You are not a cricketer because you <laughs> went out, you batted at 10. Now, this is a Sunday league, so it's essentially be, but pub cricket. You still batted at 10. And yes. I ask you now, to the viewers, the grubs, how did you go? Uh, not too crash. I was doing a mate a favour. I was, I was feeling in that I was short. Um, Tommy Morris. I, I did my best to get the game called off well, before I went out to bat, as we just saw. Uh, I failed. And I selflessly um, pushed through for... <laughs> well, a... uh, we've actually got some vision on how the innings ended. <laughs> Bad luck, Hammy. Oh, no. Just oh, off. no. Bad luck, mate. Oh, he's getting chirped as he walks off. <laughs> <laughs> now they've got a he's doing the video replay signal there what's yeah. that about well dubious decision no I was I was so out and uh, our team was unfortunate so, so what what essentially happened was uh, we had a guy seen him all right at one end and uh, there's not long to go in, in the innings he missed a ball it hit him in the on the pad he called me through for a single it went straight back to the bowler he picked it up and he threw me down. I was not even in the frame. I was several metres out. I was nowhere near it. And I stood out, I stood out there. I sort of carried on a bit. I called for the review. No. Um, and so you've I, been run out for a duck. Yeah. Yep. Face two. But it wasn't a diamond duck. Uh, oh, not that's that it good. really matters. But Some comfort. And then, yeah, I got, I got chirped on the way off. And I got uh, cyber bullied by Tom Morris. So, yeah, um, yeah a well, pretty rough day. I'm going to jump straight into... Well, we had the naughty list. Yeah. What are we calling the other one this the year? Nice the nice list. The nice list. list. That makes Generally sense. You're humble, mate. For anyone over the age well, of... Well, the two. nice list for me is the sports bet social team, which they managed to turn Oof. that remarkable footage into this video. Can I just get centre? There was zero need to ask for that. I will literally be out in two balls. Two balls later. Craig. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, they've done well there. Great credit, work. credit where it's due. So last time, last time I do a favour. Last time I do a favour for Tom Morris though. Yeah, I mean, he has stitched you up. We've been very, up. we've been good. And where was? Why was there no footage of my wicket? That's what I ask. Where was that? Was Although, to be honest, it was very yeah. ordinary. It was a half-tracker. Yeah, that would have been. It caught on the midweek boundary. But, you know, I'll take it. That's fire content, though. It is Love good content. That. Well done to the good content chirp. team. Uh, you're, on the, you're on the nice list. Now, uh, nice list, I, there's a guy that we usually give a bit of a ribbing mm. when it's not me for my terrible batting um, on this show, and that is Flanners. Uh, we were doing a shoot the other week, though, and Flanners is... <laughs> we kind of brought in a bit of a new rule at our shoots that you need to get changed out of your whites when you're mm. eating because... Well, Particularly him, yeah. he just ends up covered in the stuff. So there's a photo here of Flanners, uh, if you're watching at home. Uh, he actually, he's bought himself a bib and um, he's holding <laughs> oh to a bit of a God. cake there uh, at the dinner table. It's and effectively a big T-shirt. Yeah, yeah it's, it like is. A, it's like a smock. Where does the yeah. bib start in the shirt? <laughs> I don't it's know. It's tied up around the back. <laughs> he made me do it extra tight as well. But he's pretty happy with his work there, Flanners. And why wouldn't you be? Because uh, you kept yourself clean. You made a mess of your bib. But mm. um, <laughs> full credit to you, Flanners, for taking our advice on board and making sure you didn't slop crap all over yourself uh, this festive season. Well done. Well done, Flanners. Hopefully something <laughs> under the tree for you, mate. I've, I've gone big on the nices because oh. it is Christmas time. Yep. And we want to get around everyone. First one comes from the Gabba. If you've been to a big bash game at the Gabba, it's a riot hum. It's easily the best grand to watch a 2020 in. Oh. And the crowd really gets involved now. I think it was Sam Billings, uh, the Englishman, who, who tossed a huge six into the crowd, second decker. Well held by the gentleman in the crowd. Um, he's taken the catch, he's carried on, he's really paid up to the camera. He's finished the rest of his beer. The kicker was, he was sitting in the sports bet seats. Oh. Oh. So our good friends in the uh, um, premium team there at Sportsbet had uh, sort of... Uh, uh, Quinny, I think his name is, uh, out, and I, uh, I hope that he was sitting in our seat. So, well played, gen uh, young man. Yeah. Um, you've definitely, you know, hell, it was a harder catch than Hammy's, and you celebrated yeah. much better than Hammy. You had a look, a, look, a, a, a look of a, you know, someone who can take a catch yeah. as opposed to Hammy who was in pure disbelief. Yeah. Um, so, well done there. I think we had a photo of uh, that great one, or maybe we don't have for this. 
Love this particular... Oh, there he uh, is. There he is. Look, Look at that. There's a full panel off for you. What's those shirts they're all wearing? Oh, it's the same guy. Brisbane, oh. Brisbane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's his standard Brisbane heat party shirt attire. Yeah. Um, he's done them all there. Take the catch, flex, high five your mate, skull. Perfect execution. Couldn't agree more they, uh, they on say, the nice list. They say the eyes are the first things to go, Hummer. Yeah. Well, actually, <laughs> admittedly, I hadn't seen that photo before. It looked like it was just one shot of the crowd. Yeah. Okay. Uh, cracking nab that one. Also, a big shout out to the Premier League security at the Adelaide Oval. And I say Premier League on purpose. Oh. Because you're not often you see this where the beach ball gets thrown back. No. Um, we got a photo of this as well. Fantastic work by yeah. this security guard. Had a few messages saying it kind of looked like me, actually. Um, <laughs> but he's picked that up. He's waited for the over to end, and he tossed it back into the crowd. Uh, oh, that is good. Everyone at Adelaide Oval is having a great time, as we talked about previously. Uh, but well played to that particular security I hope security he wasn't guard. reprimanded. When I saw that, yeah. my first thought was, oh, he's going to be in trouble. I, I was watching that live, and didn't the crowd do a total 180 on him? The, the, the yeah. camera hung on him for about 30 seconds. They were giving it to this yeah. player. I thought he was going to pop it, do all that, and then he threw it back, and they were getting so around him. That's a masterclass of feeling on the boundary. Yeah, well, yeah, it was. You really rev them up, and yeah. then you give them what they want at the top end of that. Also, some quick ones here. Ozzy Kawaja, we know he's trying to get really into the yep. social scene, and he's making a good personality of himself, potentially post-cricket. We think he should be in the team. That aside, uh, was doing some great work with the drinks. Was running out there. Michael Ness's first test wicket, obviously good mates in Queensland. But also doing the running man on yeah, the boundary. Yeah, good. Really yeah. revving up the crowd. So, Ozzy, you're on the nice list. And also, my favourite product potentially in the world... Hydrolite. Yeah. Oh, Went uh, public uh, during the week. Did it's got they? an IPO. Did yeah. you invest? I haven't invested yet, but I don't know oh why they didn't call me. I've been a spokesman <laughs> for the product for the last 10 years. Um, over the silly season, make sure you get involved with the Hydrolite. Very good stuff. Yeah, Pre and yeah. post. Two, two tablets in a small glass of water. But you have it in after. a small glass of water, which Gotta I don't agree with. a small glass with. of water. Because you don't need it. You don't need to sit there with your, you know, dumbbell of liquid that yeah. you usually yeah, walk Yeah, but then you're, getting, you're still getting the liquid in, though. That's fine. You can liquid on the side. Yeah. I'm not saying that's the yeah. only thing you need to drink full stop. Um, You're two doses, a small thing. Shot it. Uh, happy days. Yeah. That's the nice list. Absolutely. Did you have anything for uh, Ollie Robinson as well? I did have something for Ollie Robinson. Yeah. Thank you for... Uh, that's okay. How did you know uh, that? <laughs> Just <laughs> well, the thinking man's <laughs> you what, The run sheet is an amazing thing, punters, when you look at it. Um, love this from Ollie Robinson. Now, a lot of people didn't like it, and I can't understand that, because this was a perfect representation of art imitating life. Skip, might try off spin next over. That's how bad I'm going. <laughs> That's how bad Ollie Robinson's going. Yeah. He's just decided to switch it up to off spin halfway through a spell. Uh, he's just given Joe Root the nod. It might have even been Ben Stokes at that point, I'm not sure. Yep. Um, and he's turned down a couple of funky millers with the sunglasses on, Hummer. Yes. Yeah. Which got your well, it's vote, so I good. think. It's remarkable. Yeah. Now, I did see a tweet. I might butcher the exact uh, statistic here, but I think it might have been Tim Wigmore, who's a big numbers man. Mm. He calculated the average amount of turn that Jack Leach got in the first test to Ollie Robinson got in this one. I think Jack Leach was about 2.9 degrees. Ollie Robinson about... 3.1 degrees. So he's oh, out yeah. turning Jack Leach as well. Um, so, Leach yeah. is surely back at Heathrow right now. <laughs> surely. <laughs> he's about tough. to head back to England where the temperature is an average of 3.1 yeah. degrees. Yeah, absolutely. Just just more than his uh, average degrees of, of, uh, of bowling. Um, now, the, the Barmy Army, they've been beaten into submission. Those that have turned up um, over, over here, I think they're the, the home base ones this summer. Mm -hmm. um, so who knows if they're going to turn up in Melbourne. So the broadcasters have got on the front foot here and they've actually got in the booth and they've got a little bit of Barmy Army crowd noise in the can. You guys want some levels? Sandpaper, sandpaper. Uh, I just need some general complaining about what is essentially paradise, please, mate. These beers are too cold. These seats are too hard. This weather's too good. What's it been? 20 minutes. Should we reapply? Just on page two, mate, there's some really average, uncreative chants. You all live in a convict colony. He's got the sandpaper in his hand. Barmy army. Barmy army. Barmy army. Barmy army. Should we move on? Just a bit of useless natter with the bloke next to you. I'll tell you what. Ten quick wickets and we're right back in this. If I didn't dislocate my shoulder at Latomitina in 2012, I'd have been bowling first change on this tour. What county is this lad play for then? Cape Town. Production line. We really are s, aren't we? Where's bloody Jarvo when you need him? Can we just dial up the annoying 20, 30%? This is why you don't pick a bowler as your captain. Ta ta, Manus. Off to the hog pile. Bus wankers. You want some? I'll give it you. Bit of general trumpet atmos would be good. <laughs> Can you give us root? Root! Uh, Paul, you're giving us root. We need root. Can you, uh, can you hear the difference there? Root! 
That is perfect, mate. Do you want anything else from me? I'm going to go to the pub. Welcome back to the Grub Show. There you go. They don't need to turn up. It's all no, in the can No, now. go to the pub. They basically just play the hits these days anyway, don't they? It's very repetitive. Mm. Um, so there you it's go. It's a little bit uh, like a Japanese football match. Just again and again and again. Yeah. And again I will say again this. Again at least again. they can do the same thing. Look, the Australian crowd is a disgrace. <laughs> like, we cannot, or, cannot organise <laughs> anything. Other than just we don't drink. need to lift in the. We know, do. It's not part of our culture, but if we were to lift in the in the song department, that yeah. would be something. We've got some songs. Yeah. I think I heard that the crowd at Adelaide uh, letting Stuart Broad know he was part of the banking industry there. At some oh point yeah. On the band. Oh yeah. The, yeah. That's that's a nice a golden oldie. Yeah. yeah it is. When we went to the World Cup in 2010 for the football World Cup in Africa, we yeah. were singing all sorts of things like you know Happy Little Vegemites. And my dad picks the fruit that goes to Cotties and yeah. Home and Away. They they do come up pretty well. Yeah. Um, you get some strange looks from the from the foreigners, <laughs> but what's new? Yeah. As we said, the crowd at Adelaide was a little bit of a rabble. We yeah. saw some footage of them, so <laughs> very hard to organise anything. Um, it's time for a couple of these. <laughs> no, it's Has that changed? Time. No, no it's the same one. Is it? Oh, I was hoping it was going to... I thought you were going to add the chew in there. Ah, oh, uh, thank God. We'll get that, <laughs> we'll get that for uh, the next show. Your best Richie. Uh, as always, a couple of hummetheticals and one hum amusing to round us out. First hummetheticals. <laughs> If I was to open the batting in the entire Ash- for an entire Ashes series, could mm. I make more runs than Marcus Harris? No, absolutely not. I reckon I could. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's in a, he's in a, what, a 25 now or something. We're talking about real... Yeah, not, real not, cricket. Not video game no, real cricket. If real. I was batting, could no. I make more runs than Marcus Harris? No, you couldn't. No, you Have couldn't. you made more runs than him in your comp this year? I made 38, not out on Saturday. Oh, no, I did go out. Yeah, you did get 38. Yeah. All right, next one. Gave yourself some free ready. It's going to be a short, sharp one for the Christmas special today. <laughs> <laughs> Would you prefer to spend the rest of your life, you can never take these items off, either yep. you've got to wear cricket gloves that can never come off or pads that can never come off? All day, every day. What? Is that what you've got to wear? Yeah, yeah you can never take them off. Uh, and what about when you sleep? No. Pads or gloves? Uh, pads I'm wearing all day, every day because you need your hands for too much stuff. You don't, you your hands are still there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but you can't, like, type and, you know, mm, type open and stuff and... Use your phone. You can't, yeah, you can't. Can't do any of that. They're, they're, they're definitely the three top three things you need with your hands, hey? Well, yep. was, yes. Yeah. Um, that's good logic. I'm going with the pads what, as well. What, what you convinced you me. Well, I just think getting around... I think life would be easier with cricket gloves than if you're having to walk everywhere with pads. Do you think about getting stuff out of your wallet, your, you know, Mikey, any of that sort of stuff? Yeah, you would adjust, though. Like, you'd have... You'd, instead of a wallet, you'd have a can shoe you, box. Can I cut the tops off them so I've got fingertips? Like mm. uh, Jai Richardson did with his, with his nah. blue shoe? No, you nah. can't. So you got to... Yeah, nah. well, it's, it's a you simple can't. one for me, Hammer. It's good, handy for you when, you, when you're when at the bar every Friday night and you're getting a few well, cups. Just, yeah, <laughs> and, and you, can, you can carry more. more. Do you reckon? I reckon it would be harder to carry. Yeah. Throw it out there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going the gloves. I, I don't want... You'd, and you'd the be pads, walking around... Imagine sleeping in pads. Yeah, that'd be rough. You'd also get used to that. you do the David Warner every five seconds, just yeah. every single ball, just the ball. take him off. No, nah, if you off. take him off, you die. Uh, number two. <laughs> Aside from seeing okay, it live, yeah. so you can never go to the cricket ever, ever again. Yep. You can only uh, digest your cricket in one way. You can only ever watch it on the TV with no sound or listen to it on the radio with no picture. Well, radio obviously has no picture. Yep. Okay. Uh, this is, I, I feel, I, I always answer these really quickly and then I look silly, but I am definitely watching it on television yeah. without sound. Yeah. I don't need the sound on TV. In fact, uh, it's sometimes when you pick up a live stream of other sports around the world and the comment, it just comes from the live feed and there's no commentators, it's bliss. Yeah. Tennis especially. You would have, Too much you, chat. You have no idea what, what the, what's happening in the game. How would I, I'm watching it. Without watching. No, no, but there's graphics. no analysis. There's no... Well, uh, there's I a think couple. this show's proven that this is all the analysis one would need. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking radio. You're taking radio. radio? I'm taking radio, yeah. Any particular station that you'd, you'd, you'd roll with? Uh, well, that's a difficult question. We've got so many corporate partners we do, that I we can't do. offend one. You are a bit of a nomad other. too, Hum. You're always moving somewhere. You're always yeah. going somewhere. You're always out in the wilderness. That's you're right. You're out the the earth, so that's you might I, need I, the wireless. I think, I think radio. I think like, radio. That's an interesting... Well, I haven't answered it yet. Uh, I think I'd like to see what's happening there. Um, yep. You guys are any danger of not answering the same thing? <laughs> what's the point of these questions? You're just going to go <laughs> up and answer the same thing. We've got a bit of a partnership going uh, here. Because you, you, you're sulling us dross today. All right, if you answer this one the same, I'm walking off. <laughs> this is the hum amusing. Are there more doors or wheels on the planet? <laughs> um, that's very good. That's a good There's more wheels. Oh, hang on. 
There's more doors on the planet, I reckon. There's more doors on the planet. Nah, yeah. Think of an apartment building. They've got no wheels and hundreds, thousands of <laughs> yeah, doors. Yeah, but look at the car. A car's <laughs> got four. One car's got four each. That's what I, that's what I was getting sucked into, but that, only got one. That, that analysis from Hummer there about the amount of doors in a building, where there are... Well, in a, in a building, in an apartment, in a, like there's the bathroom doors. Yeah. So, can, no, I give, I, can I give you one stat that may skew the answer? Yeah, go on. How many cars are in the world? No. Lego make 30 million wheels a day, a year. A year? They'd make more than that a, a year, I reckon, wouldn't they? No, that's like... That's the hard that's data. That's the number that they've released. So 30, the, you're 30 million Lego, Lego wheels. wheels in this. Well, that probably skews it. So it's probably wheels. Oh, well, they, they make doors too, don't they, in Lego? Yeah, like, they not do as make not, doors. not as many. Not you as can many. in the Lego wheels. But think of this building we're in now. There's probably a thousand doors, no wheels. That's true. But there is a car park with a thousand cars <laughs> yeah, with yeah. four wheels. So that's a, it's a tough one. It's go, it'll yeah. go down. I, is I that a question that can't be answered? I, w- I thought that as soon as you asked it because you don't actually have any... Like the the number of people alive last week was good because yeah. you could find that out. Yeah, this is this is this is a tough one. But now that you've thrown toy wheels and stuff in, I'm mm. pro- I'll probably go wheels. I think I'll, I'll lock yeah. in wheels. If little, you know, little, let us little, little Hot Wheels. Let us let us know yeah. in the comments and below. Yeah, control cars. Yeah, and then you got to think of trains. They've got hundreds of wheels. Now, does the tire on F1 count as a wheel? Or is that just a tire? Because there's a lot of them. They no. burn through rubber like you yeah. wouldn't believe. Yeah, you might have to move on. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll let that as a question that cannot be answered. Just look at the studio unless you've got the answer. Like, anyway, yeah, good one. Good one to take into your Christmas break. Just, just ponder over <laughs> Christmas as you tuck in your turkey and maybe ask the family: Is there more doors or wheels? Are we still on air? <laughs> <laughs> tell you what, there's. Yeah, uh, I'm, being, I'm being told we tell are. You what, Hammy, there's, um, there's, <laughs> pl- there's plenty of knobs. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll move on uh, to a couple of these. Giant Stumps time, and uh, this, of course, is brought to you by Bet With Mates. Start your group, bet together, share the moment. Conditions apply, gamble responsibly. And let's go to the wine. Yes. Get around us. Big because, news, everyone. Because we finally da, won one. Da, da. Three finally green won ticks. One. It was short, $2.45-ish, but uh, there you go. Travis Head to score 10 or more runs in the first dig. Alex Carey to score 10 or more. And Munster Labuschagne to score 20 That's or more. That's just easy. Punting's mm. just easy. $2. We're back, baby. We are back. Baby, so uh, a winning feeling back in the studio, which we love. Huh? Let's keep hey, it going. And I've got a winning feeling as well, because while it was great to applaud a $2.44 <laughs> mall to get up, let me, if you, I, I haven't got the clip, but for, for the avid listeners of the show, they'll remind, they'll be remembered that I tipped the listeners into a little weather market that we had for mm. any snow to fall in mainland Australia this summer, yeah. paying $13. Well, yeah. if we just have a look at the next photo that came up from a, from a loyal listener... There we There's go. Uh, no, that's the wrong one. Uh, anyway, <laughs> there's an Instagram You're message. Double down. There's an Instagram message. I'm going to double down. I'll I'll I'll, ch- I'll chat to that one later. But uh, we got a message in from a, from a listener, uh, giving me accolades for saying that was the easiest $85 I've ever made. He put five dollars mm. on it. I guess doing my maths, but paid thirteen dollars. So yep. that is um, that's. Well and then my, I'm going to actually double down on the weather. My shy at the stumps. Now we've got a market here at Sportsbet, the hottest or coldest city. Uh, in Australia on Christmas Day. Now, stay away from the hottest market. Got Perth at $1.16 or whatever. It's predicted to be 65 degrees or something at that <laughs> western hellhole. <laughs> bit, bit of a cool change coming uh, through yeah, Perth on so, Christmas. Uh, Technically not in Australia anymore. Don't anyway. even, I don't care about Perth. We should rule them out of the market. <laughs> but where I do like some value now, Hobart, $2.75 uh, to be the coldest city in Australia. Now, that is just money for old rope. I, I don't <laughs> yep. understand it. Beg, borrow, steal, do whatever you do it. Put that on. I think there's a max limit uh, uh, you can get on it, yep. but I just think that is it's going to be the easiest yeah. make money you'll make. Gamble responsibly, of course. Of course, of course. Now, is, is, that, is that the favourite, Hobart? It'd have uh, to be, wouldn't it? Yes, I think it is. Okay. Mm. And it's moved in. It's coming to $2.20 now as we go Ooh. to wear, So uh, there you go. There we go. Market's shifting. Absolutely. You shy at the stumps? Just... Uh, then my... Well, that was my shy at the stumps. My Amazingly, your yeah, $2.20 was your shy at the stumps, but we'll go back to your stock ball now. We'll go my stock ball, actually. And I know I did say that was the easiest money. Mm. Now, I'm not a financial planner or anything, but I know that a 48% return on your investment is good going, especially <laughs> in these days. The market's crashing. Omnicrom... <laughs> Bitcoin. Crypto and Bitcoin and everything. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. You can't make sense of it. It makes sense of this. 48% return on your investment. Australia to win the third test is still $1.48 at the G. What the hell? Yeah, that is... Are, are, are they, are they, are we just like giving money away? Uh, I don't know, but just the, take, take the $1.48. You don't need to fancy it up. Don't get too... Don't put other legs in it. Just take Australia to $1.48 to win. Yeah. Okay. I'm inclined to agree. Don't yeah. get greedy there. And uh, you slogged to cow, Hummer. Uh, oh, I've had a good one. Yeah. $9 this is paying. Now, essentially, if, just let me explain this to you. It is green to hit a six, take a wicket, 
and take a catch. Now yeah. he's a gun fielder. He's going to take a catch. Boxing he's, day. He's going, this... He was under bowl in Adelaide. They're going to feel bad. They're going to give him more. They're going to give more overs. He's going mm. to take a wicket. So essentially, for $9, mm. all he needs to do is hit a six. Yeah. Hit a six. And I reckon that, you know, he's he got an absolute jaffer the other day. He did. Uh, and then his first innings was embarrassing, but I think he's due. Yeah. I think... Uh, Not bad. I'm a little bit worried that he didn't bowl that much in the, in the last innings, but yeah. when he does bowl, he comes on, he just sneaks off Joe Root for yeah. fun. So... Let's see how, see how we go. Yep. Uh, very good. All right, over to me now. So my stock ball is uh, this evening's Big Bash game. I've got the Sixers to beat the Strikers. I think they've got the, the wood over them, the Sixers, mentally. Uh, they've won their last six against the Strikers as well. So $1.60 you're going to get for the Sixers to win this evening. In the same game, he was very good to me last week. Josh Phillippe to be the top Sixers run scorer. Seeing yep. them very nicely, doing wonders. That was a green my... tick for you last week, wasn't it? It was. Yep. Doing wonders for my run Going scorer. Going back to the well. Run scorer draft. So $3 there you're going to get for him. And then my slog to cow. This one was in the BYO markets for the next uh, Ashes test. Marnus and Steve Smith to combine for over 400 runs in the match. Oh. That will get you $18. Uh, now, those guys, I think particularly Smith, love playing at the MCG. Yep. Good yep. batting conditions. You probably want a big daddy hundred out of both of them, and then just you know a little thirty or forty from each of them in the second dig. And yep. I just think it's again, it's about finding your price. Don't go nuts. A little Stewie diver on that. And yep. Merry Christmas to you and yours. Rambo. Very nice. David Warner uh, averages very well at the MCG as well, so you hope he doesn't steal too many of their runs. But yes. still a nice bet. Yeah. Uh, Willing feeling for those uh, who followed. It was David Milan, uh, top run scorer for England. That was seven bucks. That was my shot at the stumps last week. So that was a big green tick Ooh. in the first inning. Well so played. let's keep the hot streak going on the panel here. Yes. Stock ball, scorches to beat the Renegades. Uh, just don't worry about it. It's going to happen. Yeah. They're a very good cricket team and the Renegades are not. Yep. Uh, <laughs> shot at the stumps. Uh, also going to the Sixers game with you, Hammy. Yep. Well, um, we've got a handful of batsmen there. The Sixers are really, really on fire here. Philippe, uh, Josh Philippe. On Riggs to score 20 runs each. And Jake Weatherold, your man, hum. Ugh. Just to get 10. Just to get 10. Uh, that's no guarantee. Uh, 675. I think that's a safe bet at uh, that price. you got Matt Short distance. in there too. who He's oh. one of the big improvers of the uh, tournament. I do have Matt Short in there as well. Yes. Yeah. Well, he's got to get 20 runs, but I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with that. Well, just this is not a, one of our markets, but he has hit at least two sixes in his last three innings. And there's a, nice. ru- a sixes line for him this evening mm. over... Half a six, so one six or more. He's paying about a dollar eighty-five. It was so worth a look at that one yep. as well. Good shout there, Hammy. Yep. And look, I struggle with my with my slog to cow this week, but going Step with an honorary grub here. Uh, Travi Head is only seven runs behind Marnus, I think, in the run score tally for the Ashes. Yep. For him to finish on top at the end of the series, eight bucks. So one just to put under the tree and open up uh, halfway through January there. Yep. Give yourself a little bit of surprise. Travi Head, I think, in that middle order, has proven himself at number five to be the perfect counter-attacking batsman in the middle order. Yes. And I think he'll have the best of the English attack when they're really drained and score some quick runs as he do the Gabba and scored another half-century Adelaide Oval. He's got a Boxing Day ton as well. So yes. bring it on. Mm-hmm. Let's get around him. Uh, let's have a quick look at our bet with mates. Uh, Multi is not the same game of this week, but mm-hmm. it is across the Big Bash game. So I've got the Sixers to beat the Strikers there at $1.60. Rambo's got the Scorchers to beat the Renegades at $1.43. And Hummer... Uh, Australia to beat England mm. in the test. I'm getting on this week. Yeah, that's a good one. That'll yeah, get you. It's, yeah, palindrome there. Four forty four. Get around it. Uh, Check a lobby respons- on that. Yeah, yeah a little lobby on that. Bucks beer money. Roll at your father's brother. Gamble responsibly. Um, let's hope we can get another win for the team. Now to bring us home. Uh, the last segment before Christmas. It is time for this. Here we go. Rambo's quiz. I'll be a dollar ten here, wouldn't I? Last of the year. Um, yeah, I, I would have thought Hammy's going to be short odds again, but I've kind of mixed it up a bit, Hum. So Ooh, there, some, there some, might be ones we've got that... got some trains and planes in there, do we? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, Not I've been quite. reading my cricket almanac <laughs> this week. Yeah, I, think you, I think you put it past you. <laughs> this will benefit you because you just got to use a bit of common sense. And as I say that, that doesn't really make a lot no. of sense. But give it your best go, and that's all we can ask. Now, we're going to do the, the, the rule where Hummo gets to go first Absolutely. again yes. from last week. No question. Yeah. yeah. Well, otherwise it's just... Merry Christmas, Hummer. Question number one. Which of these batsmen has a higher record for runs scored in a calendar year? Is it A, Lara, B, Coley, C, Bairstow, or D, Langer? How much? It's not going to be fiery Bairstow. Or is it? Are you trying to throw me off the scent? Mm, uh, I'm going to go Coley. Bairstow. Oh, don't tell me. It's actually Justin Langer. Oh, yes, so I did have a very good year. 2016 knew, or something. Knew, he did, 2016. I knew uh, Hammy would um, bite yep. on that red herring. Yeah. Well, bold. 
Um, so nil nil going to the second well, question. What did Langer come away with? Do we know? Must it, have been about 14.81. Wow. So that's uh, just only 11 runs more than Bears though. Yep. But um, Joe Root is obviously in line for this year. He's, yeah. he's, he's got about three or four in the top 20. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a very consistent performer over a year. They do play a lot of test matches in a calendar year. England. Nil all. Bit of La Nina in that first question. It is. Number two. Now, we used eight bowlers Australia in the second innings against England at the Adelaide Oval. They once used nine in India. I'm sure you can remember the match. Yep. They were McGrath, Warren, Gillespie, Kasperwitz. Who were the other five? Uh, I'm no chance. Wait, do we get options? No. Oh. All right. Should we work together? So this, yeah, that's actually... Let's let's get a joint. You know what? That is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I just love good. that spirit. Let's, <laughs> get a, let's get a joint. So Spirity this Christmas. will have been about 2001. So you got already got McGrath, Warren, Gillespie, Catteridge. All right. Mark Taylor. I don't think he would have been playing in 2001. Oh. Steve Waugh. Good. Or did he, Steve Waugh, I, I think, maybe didn't bowl himself. Or did he bowl himself? Just just give us that one. Uh, he didn't. He didn't. Yeah. Was Mark, Slater? Mark, Slater? Mark Waugh. One. Slater? Two. Um, all right. Who else would have been in that team? You're basically everyone. The, <laughs> correct. Three. Everyone but the wicketkeeper. Uh, Damien Martin uh, was incorrect. not playing at oh. that point. You didn't yep. let me finish. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Matty Hayden? Correct. <laughs> Goodness me. Wow. One more to go. All right. We've got one more to go. Uh, we've got to be Funky Miller, hasn't it? No. Someone uh, quite close to Matty Hayden. Ah, uh, Justin Langer. Correct. Langer bowled. Wow. Langer bowled one what over. What the hell did he bowl? Uh, Dross. They couldn't get Laxman and Dravid out. Uh, I think it was about eight days they were trying to get That was out. the follow-on game, wasn't it? Yes. Um, well, we said we'd work together, but I, I think I did all four of those ones. No, so. I, got, I, no I got Slater. <laughs> no, oh, you did. You did get Slater. And Hum eliminated Mark Taylor, who retired about six years earlier. <laughs> uh, question <laughs> number early. three. Uh, who were the last two Queensland-born players to play in the Aussie men's test team? Like including right now? Uh, including right now. Queensland-born. Now, that is yeah. the clincher. Now, mm. Mm. Michael Nisa born in Queensland? Or is he from is he, he from South Africa or something like that? Famously born Manus in Pretoria. Is from South Africa. He's yep. from Pretoria. Manus and, and Michael Nisa, both South African They're both? Really? Yep. yep. We are... Starting to. There's more South Africans technically in the Australian side. Yeah, I know. Side than we might just get that one side. Uh, All right, so last two Queensland. This is a tough one. So if you're playing at home, uh, yeah. I hope you're driving along and just having a good long think about this as you go to Christmas lunch. Can we get an era? Oh, I'm going to go Nathan Horrocks. Close. There was two before him. Uh, okay. One's an opening batsman. Oh, Matty Renshaw. Nope. Oh, oh, he's from England as well, isn't he? <laughs> okay. Opening batsman and an opening bowler. Andy Bickle. Joe Burns. Correct. And an opening... A very Ashes-relevant uh, Queenslander. An Ashes-relevant Queenslander mm. with a, an opening bowler. Goodness me. Uh, come on, come on, hum. Ryan fiery, Harris. Fiery spells. It's a redhead. No, he's not. Moustache. Moustache? Mitchell yeah. Johnson. Mitchell Johnson and Joe Burns are the Who's last two Queensland born. You yeah, guys born in Townsville. It. You guys need a oh. lift. Yeah, Queensland need a lift in that department. Where was that question, mate? Uh, Cricket Almanac. I we might skip the next reading. question because um, that one took way too long and, and Hamie gave us half an answer. Who are the, who are the uh, last two Aussies to play for the Aussie men's test team who were born in England? And that was Matty Renshaw, Renshaw. and Andrew Thomas. Of course. Roy. Here we go. Back you to multiple it. choice because we don't have till 2022 to finish this <laughs> one. Jack Leach's real name is A. Chris... B, Adair, C, Victor, or D, Matthew. Why has he changed it? Didn't I'd like say it. for it's an, it's anonymity. It's a dare. So he can uh, walk he down the not, street. He would not want the name Adair. Mrs. Mac. Uh, well, he's very English. Get your Adair, I've Adair. never heard of it. Isn't that where you buy your sheets? Adair Leach. Yeah. They've got great linen in Adairs. <laughs> what do you want to lock in? Uh, Matt. I'm going Adair. It's Matthew Hammers on the board. Hey, one all. Uh, no, I believe that's one nil. I just won, mate. No, I got one. one. No, I don't think you've got one. Okay. Just won the quiz. One nil to hum. Well, well, well done. Thank you. Question number six. Oh, oh, there's one more. There's uh, there's two more. Joe Root holds the equal record for the most consecutive 50s. 50 plus innings, I can say. 12. Uh, Who does he hold the record with? A, Simon Kadich. B, Gavin Gambier. C, AB de Villiers. Or D, Alec Stewart. No, no, Stuart, he sucks. So that's 12 in Kadich. a row where he okay. scored 50 okay, plus. Kadich. I'm going to go De Villiers. 
It is AB de Villiers, okay, one yeah, one on the board, one all. Oh, Here we go. So it comes down, comes down for to the, the last line. question before Christmas. And it may be ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it comes down to this. Here we go. Who am I? Now, we'll put Hammy. it up. Put up a 2-1. Get out. Uh, <laughs> Hammer wins 2-1 with a <laughs> rubbish chat. Here am I. I played 102 test matches and 227 ODIs for the West Indies. I retired in 2002. Now, we've got a little photo here to help for those viewers at home. Joel Garner. The famous seven foot five West Indian opening bowler seen here in the picture is a clearly a right hand batsman playing a slashing shot through cut. Is in his opinion, Joel Garner. And, and the quiz is what's wrong with this apparently. The quiz is what's wrong. It's got nothing to do with the participants. The third clue, I averaged 36.46 with the bat and 49.42 with the ball in tests. So uh, all rounder. Carl Hooper? Correct. Carl Hooper, get around me. Two one. It's a Christmas miracle. <laughs> get around, around me. He also coached Southern District Cricket Club in South Australia, which I believe he still resides in Adelaide. Oh. And uh, last clue was my first name is the same as a character in The Simpsons. In case we didn't get that far, yeah, I was pretty sure Hammy was going to get that. I still wouldn't have got but that. But well done, Ham. Two one. Thank you. Hammer, you were competitive, uh, yeah. if nothing else. Yeah, sort of. Yeah, yeah. Provided some humour. I'll bring, I'll bring an epoxy next year. <laughs> you know what? We'll, we'll get someone on the phone. Yeah, genuinely, and um, we might as well. And I'll fish therapist. you out of the deep end. Yeah, absolutely. Well, team, uh, what a great note to finish on. Me winning the quiz, couldn't be happier with that. It's a Christmas <laughs> miracle. Uh, well done on a great first half of the season. Uh, enjoy some time with your families. You enjoyed it as well, uh, Grubs fans at home. Grub up, gamble responsibly, and we'll see you next year. Yeah, we're the Grubs. Grubs, Grubs, Grubs. Kick them over. We'll hit the pubs. Grubs, grubs, grubs. And don't forget your subs.